What made Sean Payton leave the Saints? Let's bring in Colin Cowherd and Mike Silver to discuss what led to this. What was the motivation behind Sean Payton joining the Denver Broncos? Look at these couple of, man, two fives make a 10. Am I right? Let's see what they got to say. Long time, well-sourced, hyper-connected NFL writer. So, you know, Mike, I spent five hours one night with Sean Payton a couple weeks ago. And you and I, you're a real flex. reporter. I a occasionally flex. have relationships, but I'm not in the story breaking business. That's what you do and do it very, very well. Uh, but we sat down and, um, you know, Sean and I talked about five hours is a tremendous time, amount of time. Like, think about how long five hours is. Think about how few people you could be confident with in sitting down and spending five hours with about everything. The Russell Wilson piece, the owner piece, the Mahomes Herbert four times a year piece. Um, and, and and the Harbaugh piece. And in our relationships with coaches, I'm I always feel like a responsibility to tell the audience as much as I can, and I will hear. Not everything. There are some things I, I want to protect my relationship with Sean. Um, so uh, before Big Colin gets gets started here, I I I think it's pretty simple. I mean you know you're you're going to hear these narratives of why you're going to hear these narratives you know free agents and coaches they always get labeled with the same narratives he wants to go win he wants to chase a ring he wants a fresh start he wants the money it's always something like that right i think peyton's is a little more clear like it's a little more basic it's a little more human i guess i think sean peyton wanted to get back on the sidelines okay no doubt i think sean peyton wanted to get paid a lot of money Okay, no doubt. And I think that those two things led to him then saying, I'm a very, very, very wanted asset. I can now pretty much pick whatever team I want. I can pretty much pick what ownership group I want, what facilities I want to go to every day, what roster I want, all that stuff. I think at the end of the day, though, I think Sean was a bit, uh, it, it, the choices weren't as good as I as he may have thought they were you know the choices were houston which i've heard their ownership group and gm situation is terrible so he didn't want to go there arizona with a busted ass kyle murray didn't want to go there and beyond that we heard some stuff about carolina why would you want to go there but beyond that it was really just kind of denver it was really it was really just it so i think peyton just chose the best of the of the worst, basically. And Denver's not a great situation. Like Denver's not a great landing spot, and that's why I say that I don't think it was some crazy uh, calculated move. What what is so great about Denver that would have needed some insane calculated year and a half off move? I think Denver paid him the most money. Denver was the least of the bad ownership groups, and a decent enough roster. Let's roll. That's pretty much it. Um, I don't want to get into the whizzing match between Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter, but I... F Let me speak about this, too. So if you don't know what he's talking about, Schefter and Rappaport were basically completely opposite of their, what they were reporting the Broncos were, were doing. One was saying that D'Amico Ryans was their first pick. One was saying D'Amico Ryans was never an option. It was always Peyton. Let me go ahead and give you a dirty little secret about these NFL insiders. These inf insiders are crooks. These insiders have agents. These insiders are represented by the same people as some of the talent or some of the coaches. And I can go ahead and tell you, I can go ahead without a shadow of a doubt, tell you that insiders make up stories and make up narratives to drive trade value, to drive contract negotiations, to, to move leverage around. I promise you it happens all the time. These guys are incentivized to do that. And I think sometimes they say, hey, I heard uh, I heard blank team is interested. Just like the Justin Herbert stuff with the Bears. The Bears were never, ever, ever going to trade Justin Herbert. They probably, I mean, not Justin Herbert, Justin Fields, excuse me. The Justin Fields stuff. The Bears were never, I can already see someone typing in the comments, y you mean Justin Fields? I caught myself. The Bears were never going to trade Justin Fields. But they leaked that 
maybe we're interested. Maybe Fields isn't our guy. I wouldn't be surprised if they sat Fields down and said, hey, look, we're about to release this stuff. We're going to try and trade it. Don't believe it. Whatever. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they had that conversation. I don't know if they did for sure, but that's what happens in sports. These, these people, these Adam Schefters, these Ian Rappaports, these whoever, they are not just tried and true Big J journalists doing their job. They have agendas. Felt when I had dinner with Sean Flex. very strongly that he was the coach, that he knew there were obstacles, and I felt Compensation, sh- this trades. is my takeaway. That you're going to have to pay for Sean because this job is not easy. There's some good stuff. It's not a rebuild. But the Russell Wilson thing is real. Bad. Is that real bad. Is that how you view this situation? That the price point, I mean, that's why I talked to Sean Monday after my show. I Flex. thought he was a Fox employee. I think this thing came down to Denver making a financial commitment to Sean, letting him know, hey, we know it's not easy. We're going to take the pay scale to a different level. Word on the street is it's between 17 and 20 million, I think is what I heard. I believe Sean was asking for 20 to 25. So I would assume the Broncos probably gave him that extra little bit. I would assume it's probably closer to 20 to 25 than 17 to 20. Is that your interpretation? Well, well, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, it's a leap of faith on both sides. Um, for whoever was going to take that job, you've got at least a year with Russell Wilson, and you pray it doesn't look like it did this last year, um, possibly two years, because it really does impact your cap. You've lost a lot of draft capital because of that trade as well. A ton. Um, and you are in that division with Mahomes and Herbert. And, uh, you know, that's kind of a you know something that would give a candidate with options pause yeah, absolutely even possibly to make Ryan's. he may have had his other reasons for wanting houston or if you aren't sean payton if you if you're not because sean payton as far as i believe i don't i didn't have a five-hour dinner with sean payton like like cowherd did but I would assume Peyton's like, look, I want to kind of go somewhere for the last little hurrah of my career, and that's it. You know, like I'm gonna try and win a little bit more, and then I'm gone. I'm gonna collect a couple of years worth of twenty, twenty-five million dollar salary, and then I'm gone. Demico Ryan's is like, hey, this is my first stop as a head coach. Do I really want to saddle myself with the Russell Wilson stuff, or would I rather go to Houston, have a high draft pick, you know, have some flexibility with the front office if we want to move off of it, or move up, or move down, or however we want to do it? Like that, it makes perfect sense for why D'Amico wouldn't go to Denver. I I have said for two days now, I don't think Denver's that attractive. And like Colin said, this Russell Wilson thing is real, my friends. They have a ton of draft capital and money tied up in Russell Wilson and now tied up in Sean Payton. They basically have traded the farm for Russell Wilson and Sean Payton one of who just had the worst year of his career. So if Russell Wilson, they won five games this year. If they improve by three wins and they win eight games, miss the playoffs, that's an improvement, but it ain't enough when you leverage the entire franchise for two guys, especially when one guy is getting, or when both guys are getting older, but when one is tied dramatically to his physical capabilities. And then I hear all this stuff about, well, they'll just cut Russell Wilson. They'll just eat the money. And then what? You don't have any picks for a rebuild. You're going to cut him and do what? You don't have a pick. You, you traded all those away. If you, I mean, they're, they are hard stuck. Uh, th- that cannot be understated. Now, there's a, chan- uh, there's a chance that Sean will get the best out of Russell Wilson. Will Russell Wilson ever be an MVP candidate level player again? No. And can you win in that division without an MVP level quarterback? Would an average Russell Wilson be good enough? I don't think so. Or he may have had the choice made for him and just read the the tea leaves. But um, that was one thing. If you're looking to hire Sean Payton, uh, you know the price tag is high. Uh, you have to give up. Got to make the draft trade. capital. Yep, that's especially sensitive if you're the Broncos because yep. you just gave up 
All what that I just said, Michael. Capital that's what I just for said. Russell, you got the one back for Chubb. You're giving that away now. Um, if you're the Texans, you could say, ah, we've got draft capital. We got all that Deshaun Watson loot. Uh, but you are necessarily, you know, weakening yourself. So you're giving up draft capital. You're giving up money. Now, that was a strength of the Broncos job. Uh, they the do money. have lots of yeah. money. They do have the Russell issue. You know, George Payton is a very, very well-liked GM. I think if Sean was going to uh, come in somewhere and turn the GM into essentially a director of player personnel, um, you know, George is someone that you could see that relationship working out, at least in the short term. Uh, he, he's super well-liked. He goes with the flow. Um, but, you know, my read on the Broncos from afar is that they knew that Sean was expensive, both in terms of draft capital and money. Um, and they knew that he came in with a little swag. He wasn't kissing the ring of the Walmart. And uh I'll tell you this. Another thing, if I could choose, if I'm the Broncos, and I could choose Jim Harborough without having to trade anything away at a much lower price tag or Sean Payton with all they gave up, I'd probably go Harborough. I mean, like, I just don't know if Sean he definitely has that swagoo that uh, Mike is talking about he definitely is going to come in with very braggadocious Sean's a prickly pear but man I mean this is a tremendously difficult task that he that he is getting now he's certainly getting compensated for it you get paid 25 million dollars a year hey I'll, I'll, I'll try the hardest job in the world but Mm. Oh, wow. I just want to, you know, he's basically saying you should hire me because I'm awesome. Um, so you also had to go down parallel paths before you decided whether you're going to do that. And it just seemed to me that at least the public facing side of it. Remember, these are the richest people, you know, there yep. are and they're not used to really being criticized like, say, NFL owners normally. Mike. I said that last week. I've been saying that on my videos for the last two months. You got to remember who the hell these people are. They are billionaire owners of football teams. They are in a 32-person club, a 32-ownership club. And if their team is getting their ass kicked and they're the laughing stock and they hear about it in ESPN and they hear about it on Twitter and they hear about it from the fans and they hear about it from all those people, if you don't think that that throws them for a loop, these guys haven't lost, and women, haven't lost in their life. And now they're losing on the grandest stage of it all. These people are the most fragile, egotistical people on the planet. So I'm not shocked at all that the ownership, ownership group of the Broncos, after getting their ass kicked and getting laughed out of the building every single game, I'm not surprised at all that they said, you know what, whatever. We'll give, we'll give Sean whatever the hell he wants, which is why... For the past week or two weeks, I've been saying on here, Loomis has to play hardball. And all the people in the comments were saying, you're not going to get a first for Sean Payton. What makes you think that they would give up a first for Sean Payton? I always know. I get criticized. And people are looking at it going, well, you asked Harbaugh. He said no. You flew off to see him again. He still said no. Dan Quinn dropped Good out. Colin's face. Uh, and D'Amico Ryans chose the Texans over you. So whether that's an accurate assessment, because I think there were a <laughs> lot of moving parts. Also, by the yeah. way, someone leaked that David Shaw was the favorite. So now God, it really looks like you imagine? four different could people you imagine? that you either that's couldn't right. get or didn't want. And now you're like, well, how are we going to not look like these, you know, bumbling <laughs> billionaires what are we going to do? Let's swing big, baby, because money yeah. is a strength. And, you know, absolutely. Th them paying Sean Payton, whatever they pay Sean Payton, is like you and I, you know, exchanging a, a burger, basically. Well, and, and here's the thing there are parts of the job that are really good. Like in the NFL, you've got. <sighs> the parts of the job that are really good is the defense. I mean, you're an NFL head coach, which is always nice. And that's really about it. Got a talented quarterback. I, I guess you could argue, like, Denver is a good fan base. You could argue that Denver does have... That Denver is good in that setting, where they, they are a good fan base, a good city. You know, it, it's a proud organization. So that, that 
that portion that portion is 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 strong. A starting left tackle, pretty good <laughs> perimeter weapons, a young running back who was hurt but people really like. Yeah. Some of the best corners in the sport and you've got some defensive personnel that can you know, that can move around. Um you also it's a big brand. Um and you can as you know, you can get draft capital pretty quickly, move people here or there. You can um but I I said this in my 10 minute ramble before you. If this was an if this was an easy job, Sean would have taken it a month ago or 3 weeks ago. I think the Russell piece scares people. That's the hardest part. If it wasn't it's crazy, but this team would be so much more attractive with no quarterback. If they had Trevor Simeon and they were like, all right, we got to find a quarterback. We, we got to go get someone in free agency. We got to draft somebody, develop them. That would be such a more attractive situation than Russell Wilson's ginormous contract on the back of a terrible year. That's another part of it. So the Broncos have not been good for a while. Then they've missed the playoffs for seven straight years or eight straight years. They haven't been very good. They haven't been very relevant. Making this Russell leap and then being just as bad as ever, if not worse offensively than ever, now the clock is so sped up for Peyton. I talked about if the Broncos go eight, if they win eight games and they improve by three wins, will that be good enough? I'll do you one worse. What if they're the same? What if they're a work in progress where Russell's kind of better, but they're five wins, six wins, and that's about it? What happens then? Because now this ownership group has two years of terrible results. The fans have terrible results. Russell has two terrible seasons. And then on top of that, you throw more salt in the wound because you gave up even more draft capital and more money to get Sean Payton. Like I think I think that the 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 room for error is so low in Denver. But I also think there's a part of Sean, like, okay, so I used this when the 49ers traded for Christian McCaffrey. I had to write a column immediately for the Chronicle, and I, I led with something of the effect of this was a move based on or born of arrogance. And I say that lovingly, by the way, as a fellow arrogant Well, that was person. a great column. I read that. Yeah, it was a great you. column. But, I mean, like, I know what it's like. I I, I believe in my abilities, you know, probably to a ridiculous – degree at times and if you're Kyle Shanahan you're like oh man I know it costs a lot but if I get Christian McCaffrey <laughs> and I put him in my offense and I like it's gonna be insane so you I think you want your coach to have that streak I'm sure Sean's very very confident in his ability but I'm I don't I don't buy into the whole idea that like Sean wants to go fix him you know the you know the girl you know how the girl, the old ad this is a terrible metaphor coming up. You know the old adage that the girls want the bad guys because they believe they can fix them. Like that's always in every movie, every every teenage rom com or whatever. I, I gotta get through this metaphor quick. I don't think that Sean. I don't think Sean is saying I can fix Russell. I think Sean's sitting there looking around, going, "Damn man, I gotta deal with this. Like I gotta, I gotta, I gotta squeeze the last bit of juice I can out of Russell." But I also think, I think Mike was talking about this as well. Sean probably just doesn't care. He may be that big of a, of a you know, narcissist or whatever, where he just thinks, you know what? If Russell sucks, Russell sucks. If the Broncos suck, Broncos suck. I'm cashing checks. It is what it is. Worst comes to worst. I'll just go back to the booth in two, three years. Whatever. Who cares? I've already have, I already have my ring. They love me in New Orleans. I have, my career is solidified. Two, three bad years in Denver isn't matter, doesn't matter to me at all. That could certainly be the case. So, look, I've known Sean Payton since the early days. And Flex. I love him. And one reason I do is because he believes that Sean Payton is really, really good at this. So, in a he way, is. I think you're like, yeah, I could do that. And, by the way, like there might be more attractiveness because everyone thinks it's a bad job and everyone thinks Russell can't be salvaged. And if you, you struggle at first, people might give you a little bit of a lee, you know, a little bit of leeway there. But if you don't and you come in and, you know, 
make the playoffs next year, people are going to go, Sean Payton, man, look what he did. You know, and Doug Peterson just kind of did it. He had an easy division. But, you know, Sean Payton is one of the absolute best in the world at what he does. For sure, and he knows 100%. It, and his knowledge of that is part of what makes him who he is. And that's what you're... It is a low-risk job for Sean. Because Sean believes that his career is set. If they make the playoffs, it's going to be so much praise heaped on him. And if they lose, Russell Wilson's probably going to take a majority of the flack. So in that sense, yeah, it's not a bad gamble for Sean, who really can't lose in the situation and can gain either even more legacy building. At the very worst, he just gains $20 million a year. So um, one of the things that is a reality um, – and Colin's I whole background just changed. What just happened? Because I haven't been offered this level of money. But sometimes you just get offered money you can't say no to. Oh, yeah. And, um, I, you know, we, we've seen coaches take jobs. And I've seen actors do movies. I'm like, this is absurd. What, what are you? Even from a non-celebrity standpoint, I have friends. Hell, I took a job five years ago or something like that strictly for the money didn't work out but it was at that time something i couldn't say no to people in normal jobs that aren't actors football players coaches whatever sometimes you get i call, back then i called it a mission like you know how missionaries get sent out for two years they gotta do what they gotta do to get to heaven that's how i felt i was like man i just gotta do this for a year two years catch some checks and then we'll figure something else out and then COVID hit and changed all that but it happens in real life. Sometimes, especially in a kid's game that football is, sometimes all that like tough division, tough conference, Super Bowl, what about this? What about the cap? Sometimes none of that matters. And then you see the, you see the price tag, and you're like, okay, I get it. I understand it. Um, so I believe that what the Broncos paid Sean Payton, and this is why Harbaugh came in again. I think, I think Sean liked working in television and knew next year you've got two great college quarterbacks who are both guys that can start. I think in the end, and it won't come out maybe for a while, could this just have been, you know, $25 million a year? I'll figure it out. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. I think people want to hear Sean wants to change Russell Wilson. Sean wants to fix Russell Wilson. Sean's the NFL or the quarterback whisperer. Nah, it's human nature, baby. He's getting $25 million a year to go do something he's really, really good at in Denver. Okay. I'll, hey, we got a tough calorie, uh, salary cap situation. Okay, we'll figure it out. Hey, Russell Wilson kind of struggled last year. Oop, don't care. All right, I'll go look at houses in Denver. I mean, think about, you know, when you're you're watching this, think about true life-changing money. And think about what it would take for you to turn that down, right? Now, think, like, in my mind, it's like, man, I, I had to go, I had to move somewhere so shitty, I'd turn it down, or if the company was just so messed up and blah, 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 blah. You don't have those problems with an NFL team. Worst case scenario, you're living in Denver for a couple of years. You're working at premier facilities. You're in the NFL. Like it ain't that bad. So I, I, I'm with Colin. I think it's straight up. He saw twenty five million dollars a year with a bunch of bonuses. Okay, let's let's see what happens. Right. I I mean, the, you know, there's always a number for sure, uh, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly how it played out again, because we, we saw, we saw the public facing part of it and the owners, the new owners were looking like amateurs. They have For some, sure. it's a, it's a less attractive job in some ways, along with the fact that it gets even less attractive if you have to give up a one and a two when you're already strapped to Very hire true. this specific yes. person. What is their strength that they could offer? Cash. We are so rich that when That's you right. hear the numbers like that, what we hear is, uh, yeah, I'll take fries with that. 
go back to my burger analogy. I mean, it's right. just not the way that. Well, and it's also you know, the Broncos versus the Texans. It's it. also the Bron. Like, um, they do have a good now, brand. Uh, we saw Tepper do that in North Carolina, and you know that ruffled the feathers of the billionaires club he was joining. Whatever, but I think the problem is that he did it with Matt Rule, who it turned out was not a you know a guy who could come into the NFL, snap his fingers, and make it awesome. But Sean Payton's as close to that as what we have. Yeah. He's as close to, you could put him in an NFL context and have a very strong belief that he's going to succeed. John Gruden. Ha- yeah, agreed. Sean, Sean, Sean is not going to guarantee you a Super Bowl. He's not even going to guarantee you 10 wins. He's not going to guarantee you the playoffs. But he will guarantee your organization structure. And as long as he's there, you won't look like amateurs. You may not be that great on the field. Sometimes the roster gets in the way, ask the Saints. But you had the faith that he knew what he was doing. You had the faith that the structure of the organization was going the right direction. I No one screamed more at Sean Payton during his time in New Orleans than I did at those games. But I never felt like the Saints organization was falling apart. I sometimes criticized his play calling or I criticized his, you know, roster decisions or whatever. But I never criticized like the whole infrastructure. And for a team like Denver, who I mean, look at the coaches, look at the quarterbacks, their infrastructure is broken. That's why they haven't been in the playoffs in seven years. So you can be you can take sol- or have solitude and that Sean will fix those issues. Kind of had that sheen to him. Didn't work out. Emails were released. Yada, yada, yada. He's not working. But uh, John Gruden had done it long before. Sean Payton just got done with the Saints. He knows the league. He's been really good at it. And again, he's got the belief, that self-faith, whatever we want to call it. You know, it depends. Like when I'm writing an article, I'm like, am I being nice? Do I like the guy? He's really got a strong sense of self. And if I'm like, that guy's been yeah, really kind of yeah. annoying to me. Yeah, he's an egomaniac, but it's yeah. the same thing. And, uh, you know, Sean Payton has a strong sense of self. He believes in Sean Payton. Yeah, pay him and give him a challenge. Because I'd rather pay a guy I think is very, very proven in doing this specific thing than a guy who, and I, and I like that rule, but, you know, he did it at Temple and Baylor. Sean Payton did it at the Saints coming off a, a you know, horrible natural or horrible disaster. I will yeah, say well this years ago, Tony Romo, I heard this story about Tony Romo oh, and Jerry Jones good. like 20 years ago or whenever it was, 15 years ago, that they were negotiating. And Tony Romo said, listen, I'm going to make you overpay for me because then I know you're committed to me. Hmm. And I think, I think that was Sean Payton's one of his really strong hands. Yeah, we're going to reset the market because people... That's a strong hand for Peyton specifically in the situation because you also have the tug of war with Russell Wilson. So if they underpay, like pretend you're Sean Payton and you get underpaid or just market value, I would think, shit, they may cut bait with me if, if Russell says, if Russell says, hey, get this guy out of here, in 10 months, I could be fired because they're way more invested in Russell Wilson. So in Sean's situation, it even it's even more important to know, like, hey, look, do, you, do I have your buy-in? Do, are you committed to me? Are you committed to Russell? Are we the same? If stuff goes south, do I got to worry about my job? So getting overpaid like he is getting overpaid, that tells him, look, we are all in on you, totally separate of the Russell Wilson stuff which I would assume is going to bestow a whole lot of confidence in Sean Payton when it comes to the ownership group. People as rich as you, I'm a rounding error if I don't work. Yeah. If, 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 so I want it to sting if you got to write a $125 million check. Yeah. At least your accountant will call and go, reconsider. So I, well, yeah. Well, I mean, that's why Jed York, to his credit, after Harbaugh's gone, then Tom Sula won and done, Chip Kelly won and done. When he finally settled on Kyle, was like, I'm giving him and Lynch six-year deals. 
you know, which was way high for first timers because I'm just making a statement to, to them and to everyone. We're done with this one and done thing. By the way, Jerry, here's the brilliance of Jerry Jones, or some people would say it's not brilliant. I thought it was. Um, after T.O. came to the Cowboys and the infamous push-up or, you know, sit-ups. The up sit-ups and in the driveway. And all yeah. that. But that dispute in Philly was a, you're not paying me what I'm worth. You know, that's what fueled T.O.'s, you know, drama. And Jerry Jones is like, I'm going to get his money right and I'm going to get the best out of this guy and I'm going to show him that his money's right. And I, you know, in, in essence, I'll overpay because I, I think his psyche will change so much. This particular guy, um, you know, and Jerry overpaid for the stadium because he was trying to make a statement to right. the world. He thought the stadium would become a, an event in and of itself. And if it sounded even more expensive, that was a win you know, and practice yeah. facility too. So, uh, you know, and those of us who don't have billions to make statements with, you know, can only theorize about these things. But I, I do agree with you. I think, I think he's a hundred percent correct. I could not agree more. I've said it a while. Mike nailed it right there. You show Sean something and, you know, you're, you're betting on a guy who, uh, thinks that he's one of the few people, if not the only person who could actually fix it. And I get it. That's cool. Mike Silver. Great stuff. Good stuff. I mean, good stuff from both of them. Uh, we're on the same page here. Uh, we're seeing it pretty clear. I got a feeling, I got a feeling the people at ESPN may say things differently. I think they may be spinning a couple more yarns, but it's cut and dry. Ladies and gentlemen, he got $25 million to go coach in Denver. So let me know in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think was the driving force behind Sean Payton going to the Broncos? Do you think it was to fix Russell Wilson? Do you think it was to go win a championship? Do you think it was for the challenge of fighting against Patrick Mahomes every, every uh, twice a year? Or do you think it was a little different than that? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. The links to this video will be down in the comments below if you want to go watch it again. Uh, but why would you now that I have, you know, broken it down so eloquently? I'll see you in the next video, ladies and gentlemen.